Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Wednesday, July 8th. I apologize that the live stream is not working this morning. I'm getting an error from YouTube uh, that says live streaming is not available now. So I am recording this and I will upload it immediately after. Again, my apologies for that. Once in a while that happens. That's strange. Okay. Uh, on this day in 1942, uh, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League was organized, and we do recognize that uh, today. Uh, I think most of you are familiar with the LWML. Uh, they're the ones that collect the mites, the, the loose change in the little mite boxes, and that money goes to various missions uh, throughout the world. And that is a completely uh, female Lutheran organization. And they do a lot of great work uh, all over the world, including here at home. Uh, so we recognize and thank God for them uh, today for that. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Judges, chapter 3, beginning in verse 7. And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asheroth. Therefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the people of Israel served Cushan Rishathaim eight years. But when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the people of Israel, who saved them, Othniel the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and the Lord gave Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim, so the land had rest forty years. Then Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. And the people, people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He gathered to himself the Ammonites and the Amalekites, and went and defeated Israel. And they took possession of the city of Palms. And the people of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, eighteen years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and the Lord raised up for them a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, a left-handed man. The people of Israel sent tribute by him to Eglon, the king of Moab. And Ehud made for himself a sword with two edges, a cubit in length, and he bound it on his right thigh under his clothes. Uh, recall again, a cubit is about, as I recall, it's about 18 inches, but the traditional measure was from your elbow, I believe, to the tip of your index finger, uh, was the standard unit. And now I lost my place, of course. Uh, and then he presented tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, 
Now Eglon was a very fat man, and when Ehud had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who carried the tribute. But he himself turned back at the idols near Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And he commanded, Silence. And all his attendants went out from his presence. And Ehud came to him as he was sitting alone in his cool roof chamber. And Ehud said, I have a message from God for you. And he arose from his seat. And Ehud reached with his left hand, took the sword from his right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. And the hilt also went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not pull the sword out of his belly. And the dung came out. Then Ehud went out into the porch and closed the doors of the roof chamber behind him and locked them. When he had gone, the servants came, and when they saw the doors of the roof chamber were locked, they thought, Surely he is relieving himself in the closets of the cool chamber. And they waited till they were embarrassed. But when he still did not open the door of the roof chamber, they took the key and opened them, and there lay their lord dead on the floor. Ehud escaped while they delayed, and he passed beyond the idols and escaped to Syrah. When he arrived, he sounded the trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim. Then the people of Israel went down with him from the hill country, and he was their leader. And he said to them, Follow after me, for the Lord has given your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. So they went down after him and seized the fords of the Jordan against the Moabites, and did not allow anyone to pass over. And they killed at that time about ten thousand of the Moabites, all strong, able-bodied men. Not a man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest for eighty years. After him was Shamgar the son of Anath, who killed six hundred of the Philistines with an ox goad, and he also saved Israel. And our writing this morning is from the Book of Concord, from the Solid Declaration of the Formula of Concord, uh, Article 2 on Free Will. The preaching and hearing of God's Word are the Holy Spirit's instruments. By, with, and through these instruments, the Spirit desires to work effectively to convert people to God and to work in them both to will and to do. God works through this means, i.e. the preaching and the hearing of the Word. He breaks our hearts and draws us to Him. Through the preaching of the law, a person comes to know his sins and God's wrath. He experiences in his heart true terrors, contrition, and sorrow. Through the preaching of and reflection on the Holy Gospel, about the gracious forgiveness of sins in, in Christ, a spark of faith is kindled in him. This faith accepts the forgiveness of sins for Christ's sake and comforts itself with the Gospel promise. So the Holy Spirit, who does all this, is sent into the heart. No conversion would follow this preaching and teaching if the power and effectiveness of the Holy Spirit were not added. The Spirit enlightens and converts hearts through the word preached and heard. So people believe this word and agree with it. The preacher and the hearer should be certain that when God's word is preached purely and truly, according to God's command and will, and people listen attentively and seriously and meditate on it, God is certainly present with his grace. He grants, as has been said, what otherwise a person can neither accept nor give by his own powers. For we should not and cannot always judge from feeling about the presence, work, and gifts of the Holy Spirit, as to how and when they are experienced in the heart. They are often covered and happen in great weakness. Therefore, we should be certain about and agree with the promise that God's word preached and heard is truly an office and work of the Holy Spirit. He is certainly effective and works in our hearts by them. Now, that, those couple of paragraphs certainly uh, said a great deal. And uh, a lot of times we'll read that and go, why is this article called On Free Will? And it is talking about how we cannot by our own power, as Luther said in the Catechism, I cannot by my own reason or strength know my Lord Jesus or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. Uh, we are unable to believe uh, unless the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to believe, uh, that is where our, our free will is incapable. Uh, we have the free will to reject God, 
We have the free will to ignore his word, and we have the free will to go out and sin, but we do not have the free will to believe. The Holy Spirit works through the word and grants us the gift of belief. Uh, without the Holy Spirit, we would not be capable. We'll talk more about that in our evening prayer as we go through the small called articles, and then later when we do the Augsburg Confession and we do the Formula of Concord, uh, they all cover this same topic in various degrees of completeness. Uh, and the more you listen to it, the more it just it makes sense, because our natural inclination is to want nothing to do uh, with the things of God. The other great point from this, and then I'll, I'll stop talking and we'll get on with, with our prayers, uh, is that point that it is not always, how do they phrase it exactly? Uh, no, I just lost it. It was talking about, oh, you, here we go. For, uh, for we should not and cannot always judge from feeling about the presence, work, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that is a problem with uh, many uh, American evangelical churches which base their worship on feeling and feeling uplifted and feeling on fire for God. And yes, sometimes we feel on fire for God and sometimes uh, our spirits are very high. But the way they, they manipulate emotions in so far as if all of a sudden you don't have that feeling anymore, you wonder, do I have the Holy Spirit? Uh, you can't, uh, unfortunately, uh, like the Force in Star Wars, you can't trust your feelings to know the work of the Holy Spirit. He's there and he's working. Uh, but as human beings, we have a range of emotions, so you're not always feeling like you're on fire. There's nothing wrong with your faith. In fact, uh, the ability to question... Uh, your faith is a sign that you have it. Uh, if you didn't have it, you wouldn't be worried about it in the first place. Uh, we'll talk more about that because that can be uh, often uh, uh, confusing. And if you've been taught differently, uh, it may even seem uh, a little insulting. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't mean to be and it, and it shouldn't be. Uh, but we'll talk more about that as we uh, go on further in our study of the Book of Concord. Uh, that said, uh, we now... Uh, confess the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Wednesday prayer is the shorter litany, as we do each Wednesday. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord to comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. 
Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you brought joy to Gentiles and persecution to Paul and Barnabas through their proclamation that Jesus is a light to all nations, to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Give us courage to proclaim the gospel throughout the world, even in the face of opposition, knowing it is through suffering that we enter the kingdom of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Have a great day.